Welcome back, guys, to John chapter 8. Turns out Tanner says he's not going to edit out all of my blunders, so I've got to do a little bit harder job of making sure I don't call, like, you know, the Jordan River, the Nile, or something like that. Uh, anyway, we are John chapter 8 today. John chapter 8 begins with the woman caught in adultery. In this, in this uh, narrative account here, we see a woman who is brought to Jesus and caught in the act of adultery. I don't know. I'm not going to be too much of a conspiracy theorist here or go beyond what is revealed here in the text, but it almost sounds like a bit of an entrapment that uh, they knew something was going to happen or maybe uh, something even more devious than that, but they knew something was going on, knew something was going to happen. They catch a woman, bring her to Jesus, say, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And I think that way, too, because where's the man? The man is not present in this account. But regardless, they, they bring her to Jesus because they want to accuse Jesus of something. The woman is just a tool to them. She's just a tool to get what they want. And it, it reveals their heart. It just screams of their heart. They're, they have no compassion. They have no care. They're not even really concerned about the law so much or the, the heart of the law and what it's about when it talks about adultery and the, the pain and the sorrow that it brings to people. They just want a reason to accuse Jesus, and they knew Jesus shows compassion. The Messiah won't have compassion. Jesus has compassion, so we got him. Well, actually, what they're wanting to do is get Jesus to violate the law of Moses. They bring her to Jesus. Jesus doesn't pay any attention to him for a while. Finally, he gets up and tells them, you, you without sin, cast the first stone. So he upholds the law, but he also shows compassion on the woman. They all leave knowing that they have sinned. And Jesus is the only one there with her. Don't miss that. He's the only one there because Jesus has no sin. Jesus said, where are your accusers? And they're gone. And he remains, and he says, I won't condemn you either. Remember back in John chapter 3, Jesus says that the Son was sent in the world not to condemn the world, but to save it. And he offers her salvation right here. He tells her to go, to go. But he also tells her, go and sin no more. Sin no more, to repent, to change. But that she's been offered grace and been offered mercy. So you move on, we get to this, one of the great I am statements of John, and Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Jesus is God in flesh. He is the full revelation of God. He brings light and truth. He illuminates to us who God is. Uh, we understand the difference between a dark, uh, gloomy day and a day where the sun is out, the sky is blue. We feel a difference. With light, uh, we understand the difference. If you ever get up in the middle of the night, see, I have glasses. And when I take these, I get up at night. If I have to get up, I've run into walls before. I, it's, it's, it's a bad deal. One time, I remember after we just moved into our house in Wilcox, uh, one of the kids had gotten up. And so I get up, and I'm not kidding you. I just run into, I'm just fiddling around on the wall, the wrong wall, looking for the door because I'm just like totally out of it. But you turn the light on. And you can see. Well, at first you're like, yeah. But Jesus says, I am the light. I am going to show you the way. So you're not fiddling around and wandering around in the dark. We know clearly, we can see clearly the way, the way of truth, the way of life, the way of salvation. He is the light. He's not just showing it, but He is it. He is the way, the truth, the life. Now, next in this setting, Jesus is teaching, and it says some of the Jews, some of the people have believed in him. And Jesus tells them that they must remain in his teachings. He says, you know, you need to remain in my teachings, to abide. He says this, these are the words of Jesus. He says, you are truly my disciples if you abide in my teachings, if you remain, if you continue in these ways. If you, you are truly my disciples. And so what Jesus is revealing, there may be some people who come and they follow after Jesus for a season, for a while, but then they fall away. And Jesus' words are this, they were not truly my disciples. Those who are truly His will abide to the end. They will remain to the end. Well, now, in this whole discussion, there is this uh, interaction He's having with these people. They, 
that gets very heated. It gets very, very heated. It gets very intense here. And Jesus tells them that, well, we'll just jump right to it. Jesus tells them, your father is the devil. They've been having this back and forth with Jesus. And Jesus is telling them about his father. And he's talking about God. They understand a little bit about what he's talking about, but at times they're confused. They are saying Abraham's their father, and Jesus says, Abraham's not your father. He's not their father in that you don't follow after him. You don't follow the model that Abraham set. You don't have the faith like Abraham. He says, Abraham longed for my coming. He longed for my coming. And he tell, Jesus tells them that their father is the devil. Their father is the devil. What he's saying is like, the devil is the father of all lies. He is the master of deception. He is the master of it in that he will make something that is a lie sound like the truth. And we see it in our world all the time. And we sometimes are maybe susceptible to that. We see it in the beginning, in the Garden of Eden. He made a lie sound like the truth to Adam and Eve. And sin entered into the world. And he has not changed his tactics. He's just crafty at it. He simply makes something that is wrong seem good. It seemed like the best thing. And he makes that which is good seem like it's God holding out on you. And God's not giving you the best. It's, this is his tactics. It's not changed. And so Jesus tells them, your father is the devil. You've bought into his deception. You've bought into his lies. You think you're following after me, after God, but you're not. Because if you love God, you would love Jesus. That's the message he had for them to tell them. If you love the father, you'll love the son. Well, hey guys, um, tomorrow we're going to be in John chapter 9, and uh, well, that's it for today. I'll see you then.